Now, from the makers of Cold Water Irma... Time ticked on. Emma Peel, in her apartment, finished the crossword in the evening paper and looked at the clock. Nearly half past eleven. Steed had agreed to be back by that time. Mrs. Peel rose, checked that the punch card that would gain her entrance into United Automation was in her handbag, and flung on a warm jacket. Unconsciously, she slipped the distinctive-looking fountain pen into one of the pockets. Outside, on the back stairs, the enormous shape of a seven-foot man began to start to climb up. Mrs. Peel headed for her front door, down the steps, and to her car. The man, who was a pabulum robot, stopped, turned, and lumbered down the steps after her. The Avengers. and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 6, the final episode of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel come out on top after all and prove that the modern advance in automation can be... A deadly gift. John Steed didn't know how much trouble he was letting himself in for when he accepted, as a gift, the distinctively designed fountain pen given to him by Dr. Armstrong of United Automation. For the pen was more than it was supposed to be. Inside it was a simple radio transmitter, beamed back to the computer library, where Armstrong had geared a pabulum robot to exactly the same frequency. Had the plan worked, Steed, carrying the pen, would have guided the robot towards him and been killed in much the same karate way as were the other men. But Steed had, all unwittingly, passed the pen on to Mrs. Peel, who had just had a narrow escape. Steed hadn't done all that well either. He'd been trapped in the inner workings of the air conditioning unit and only escaped by turning up the thermostat control. Back in the main body of the building, he'd headed straight for the nearest telephone. Well, she said 11.30. It's just gone. Come on, come on, woman. Too late, Steve. But in the library, Benson and Armstrong were also bemused. For on the radar scanning screen, the two dots that represented the transmitter and the robot were growing farther apart. What's happened? The robot's lost him. Well, that's impossible. For his movement, I agree, but it can't do anything with delay matters. It'll get him. A door opened and a large white-coated figure lumbered in. Uh, the maintenance robot's come to report. The robot stopped at the computer panel and inserted a card. A moment later, from a slot in the computer, a punch tape dotted with the minute holes of the computer's vocabulary gushed forth. <sighs> now, let me see. Armstrong reached out, tore off the strip, and with a skilled eye, immediately interpreted the tape. What the? What's wrong, Doctor? What is it? The thermostat was altered manually. There's an intruder in the building. What's that? Someone using the telephone in the next room. See to it, Benson. Right. And I'll take him along, too, for good measure. Right. Benson drew a gun from his pocket, and Armstrong made a few adjustments to the switches in front of him. The maintenance robot followed Benson quietly to the door of the room. Watch it, Steed. <sighs> Got to risk getting through that library and to the left. Well, here it goes. Oh, no, you don't. Steed stepped forward to tackle Benson, but the robot behind the door immediately reacted. It stepped forward and cut Steed down. I said, watch it, Steed. Well, 
Welcome to the land of the living steed. Oh. Right. Keep him covered, Bitson. Don't worry. One move and he's a dead man. You should count yourself fortunate, Mr. Steed. The Papillon robot that stands before you was programmed just to knock you out and not to kill you. How, um, how very remiss of you. I can't wait for a return, Belt. It'll be a pleasure to short-circuit him once and for all. Now, let's see. Don't move. Oh, that another of them? Looks almost human. Oh, no, perhaps not. What? Another crack like that now? No, do be quiet, Benson. That's the trouble with man, Mr. Steed. He's such an impulsive creature who cannot cope with crises. Today, one wrong decision, one simple error, could bring total destruction. And I suppose you think you've got the answer, Doctor. By all means. There, Mr. Steed, in the Pabulum robot, the electronic brain. I have blueprints, if you'd care to study them. I'll uh, take your word for it. You see, it's a small, complex computer built with these new circuit elements. With the knowledge contained within this library, think of what the machine can learn. It can be programmed with every known fact of science, economics, world history. A pabulum robot capable of absorbing knowledge like food. And with its electronic brain, incapable of a wrong decision. And what is your end product? The perfect politician? Exactly. Government by automation. Sounds to me like an electronic dictatorship. It is the only solution. Well, I'd say that would be up to the voters. They might disagree. Once we take delivery from Harachi of a mass-produced army of papillum robots, it will only be a question of time. Dr. Armstrong! Doctor! Doctor, look! Armstrong swung his chair round and followed the gaze of Benson towards the radar scanning screen. The two points of light had started to flash again. The small one was nearer the center of the screen, the larger one following behind. About to enter the building, a friend of yours carrying the fountain pen, eh, hey, Mr. Steed? Maybe. Well, it's an opportunity to demonstrate to you my radio-controlled papillum. Whoever it is who is calling has a very nasty surprise awaiting them. Mrs. Peel arrived and gained entrance to the main building quite easily. She used her punch card in the hall. Enter the lift, please. And she took the lift up. Hmm. Now, where the devil is Steed? How do I find him in a building as big as this? Good question, Mrs. Peel. In the library, Armstrong had switched on the TV screens and was able to observe Mrs. Peel quite clearly. What a charming young woman. I'm sorry she won't be joining us. Armstrong reached out to a panel marked Lift on Control and pressed the Assembly Shop button. In the lift, Mrs. Peel was vaguely surprised when the lift glided to a stop and the doors opened. She stepped out into a huge room filled with crates and boxes, all filled with the various parts of the Pabulum robot. Armstrong watched her progress with interest. Hmm, very interesting. But the other robot geared to the transmitter should be with us soon. Uh, yes. Closed circuit TV is picking him up in the lift. Steed watched with growing apprehension as the enormous figure of the Pabulum robot filled the lift. It stopped at the assembly room floor and the robot lumbered out, pursuing Mrs. Peel down the pathway between the crates. I think you must agree, Mr. Steed, that the automated assassin was a stroke of genius. Loyal, obedient... And extremely efficient. Just how efficient you'll be able to see for yourself at any moment. <clears throat> now, look here, Armstrong. Don't move, Steve. Don't move. Just sit and watch. Is this your idea of progress, Armstrong? Killing by robot? I can allow nothing to stand in my way. My robots will prevent the ultimate catastrophe. Well, at what price? A pabulum robot police, Dave. People are not machines. Of course, they're fallible. That's what makes them human. While Steed was talking, he was working at the armrest of his chair. He remembered how Armstrong had demonstrated all kinds of gadgets that were worked by the buttons concealed in the arm. The security gates at the lifts, the airflow control, even piped music and extra furniture that rose from the floor. All these things were at Steed's fingertips as he raised the arm. With the flat of his hand, he pressed the whole lot at once. Steed ignored Armstrong, threw himself at Benson. The gun went off. Steed got a grip on Benson and threw him at the computer pad. 
Steve rushed for the lift. The doors opened automatically. Come on, Steve, you're cutting this one a bit fine. In the assembly shop, Emma stopped her investigations when she heard the familiar sound of the robot's footsteps. that at all. The robot approached. Mrs. Peel dodged and the robot plunged its way through the crates, cutting a direct path towards her. <laughs> Mrs. Peel reached into her pocket and withdrew an automatic pistol. As the enormous figure pushed crates and boxes out of its way, Mrs. Peel crouched down and then fired at point blank. The Pabulum robot didn't pause but continued relentlessly. Steve entered from the far side of the room. at speed, caught the pen neatly. The robot swung round and now meant to attack him. Steve, throw back the pen! At that moment, Dr. Armstrong appeared in his chair, moved by the second maintenance robot. He made an adjustment to the controls, and the maintenance robot left him and went after Steve. Watch it, Steve! You've got both of them on you now! Throw me the pen! No fear! Steve had a far better idea. As the maintenance robot attacked and swung its arm in a vicious karate chop... <laughs> Steve ducked under the blow and fixed the pen in the robot's overall pocket. Immediately, the first robot turned and attacked his fellow machine. No! No! Stop! Stop them! Armstrong, reacting with horror at the battle between the two robots, thrust his chair between them. No! No! Stop! Stop! stop. Ah. Well... Armstrong always did say that human beings were fallible. He's just made his last mistake. Come on, Mrs. Peel, let's leave the machines to take over. They'll destroy all this quicker than we can. Come on, let's take a quiet drive home. A horse and cart, perhaps? Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omos.